Today we're going to be fiberglassing. As you can hear, I've got the heat on. I cranked the thermostat up to over 85 degrees and I've got the shop pretty warm. I want the shop warm to help lower the viscosity of the epoxy. That way it'll soak in better and wet out clearer. I also want to make sure the temperature's falling during the epoxy cure cycle. So that way I don't drive air out of the wood up through the epoxy and create bubbles. So I have it really warm now and so as I start applying epoxy I'll start turning the temperature down and throughout the day the temperature will be going lower and lower. So I've got the epoxy all ready to go. Yesterday I cut out the fiberglass and laid it on the boat and started to smooth it out. I didn't have many wrinkles but if I did this would be a chance for the wrinkles to sort of relax a little bit. So at this point I'm just going to start going to it. I'll start by putting on my protective gear. I've got a poopy suit to keep epoxy off my skin and clothes, um, help protect my clothes, not that any of this matters. And I'll also be wearing a respirator, so that's going to make it hard to talk while I'm actually doing the epoxy work. So once I'm all dressed and ready to go, it's time to start mixing the epoxy. I have a pump that's calibrated, um, but the same principles apply no matter how you do it. Either you use the little pumps supplied by the epoxy manufacturer, or you can measure it out in measuring cups. Um, I don't want to mix huge batches at a time, um, because I want to be able to get all the epoxy out of the mixing cup as quickly as possible and spread on the boat. As long as it's sitting in the mixing cup, it's starting to cure. Um, when it's spread out in a thin layer, the epoxy's not as warm. And warmer epoxy cures faster. Basically, you've got, like any chemical reaction, the warmer it is, the faster it happens. So by getting it spread out, out of the cup, onto the boat, it's now a thinner layer. It'll be at room temperature. Room temperature is pretty warm, as long as it's in the cup in my hot sweaty hand, I got 98.6 degree temperature in my hand, and then epoxy is an exothermic reaction. So the longer it sits in the pot, the warmer it gets. Just the chemical reaction of the epoxy curing starts to warm it up. And you have that big blob in there in the cup, it starts to have a feedback loop. The warmer it gets, the faster it cures. The faster it cures, the warmer it gets. The warmer it gets, the faster it cures, etc. So getting it out spread on the boat, it stops that cycle. The epoxy doesn't warm itself up particularly. It's as warm as the shop is, so I still need to go pretty quickly, but I can slow down a little bit once it's spread out. So my goal is to mix an amount that I can deal with quickly and get out of the cup as soon as possible. If I find myself in a situation where I'm leaving it in the cup and not getting it spread out because I'm dealing with something else on the boat, I have a problem. I want to get it out quickly. The most common problem with epoxy is some sort of issue with the mixing. Either the ratio is wrong or it's not thoroughly mixed. If you end up with a sticky mess two days after you've applied the epoxy, you know there was something wrong with your mixing. And again, either you got the ratio wrong or you failed to mix it completely. And so, so I want to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. I mix it for about a minute at a minimum and good quick mixes. I'm not just, this isn't just moving the stirring stick through the cup, it's good vigorous mixing, scrape down the sides, dig into the corners, make sure every bit of epoxy has been thoroughly mixed together. Once the epoxy is thoroughly mixed, again, I wanna get it out of the cup onto the boat as soon as possible. So on the level parts of the boat, in the middle of the boat, I, I generally start in the middle and work out towards the ends. I can just pour my mix out and just completely empty the cup immediately. And so I pour it out and then take my squeegee and start spreading. 
I want to spread from the middle out to the ends, but I need to make sure I get to the shear line or the part line before I start moving out to the ends. So from my puddle, I bring it down to the part line and then start moving out towards the ends. So I want to move in a solid front from the middle of the boat out towards each end. I don't want to end up with big sections pulled down the length when I haven't gotten down to the sides yet. You know the, you know the fiberglass is wet out when it becomes clear. Before that, it's white or sort of grayish. So the deck here is obviously is completely untouched with epoxy, and it's white. Once I start to get a little epoxy on it, it turns gray. When it's completely saturated, it's clear. I want to make sure it's completely saturated. Once it's completely saturated, there's a little point in adding more epoxy to that area. We want to look for star spots, but that's another issue. Once it's completely saturated, we don't need to keep on brushing more and more epoxy on it. So as we're moving down the length, we have that clear section. We don't want to have either an island, a white spot surrounded by epoxy, or a peninsula, where so it's a white spot along the edge surrounded on either side with epoxy, because that's where wrinkles get trapped. Wrinkles, once they're in the white section, out towards the end of the, end of the boat, the fiberglass can move around. As soon as we stick some epoxy on it, it starts to tack that fiberglass down, and it doesn't want to move. So if we have a wrinkle between two sections of clear cloth, it's going to be hard to get that wrinkle out along the length of the boat because now the cloth on either side of the wrinkle is pinned down a little bit. It's not impossible, but we want to avoid that. Um, so try and keep your front of epoxy moving down the length of the boat.
So I think I had the main camera off for all the epoxying on the hull. Hopefully I got most of the deck. I have my GoPro going here. Hopefully we'll get enough footage out of it. The deck, you can really see the book matching looks great. Notice the texture of the fabric here is not glossy. You can really see the texture of the fabric. There's sort of stripes where I did the grunge cupping, getting rid of the excess. Um, but otherwise, it's not completely blotchy with shiny spots and dull spots. Um, try and make it as uniform as possible. Um, and they're, they're looking really good. So again, the shop's pretty warm in here. Um, I'm sweating. I'm going to uh, just leave the shop for a while, come back in a little while and do a fill coat. So I went back into the office for a little while, let this uh, wet out coat set up a bit. Um, it's still barely tacky, um, but at this point I'm going to put a thin fill coat on it. So I'm going to end up doing a couple fill coats today. This first one I'm going to squeegee on, and which will help work the epoxy into the texture of the fabric um, and be fairly thin. And and that's all I'll do on the hull because later on, I'm, after I attach the deck and the hull back together again, I'm going to put another layer of fiberglass from the hull up onto the deck a little bit. And so I want to have the weave filled in so I can sand it without sanding the weave. If I left it without any uh, fill coat, the divots in the weave would, are quite deep and sanding in there you, you can't sand, so to get a good mechanical bond is hard because it's going to be glossy down in those divots. Um, so one fill coat will fill that up, but I'll continue on the deck with another fill coat which will start to make it shiny, start to make the surface shiny, so really bury the weed. So it'll be a two-step process on the deck. Um, First, the squeegee on fill coat, which I'm going to do right now, and then come back and do another fill coat that'll be brushed on and be substantially thicker.
I just went over the whole boat with a torch. Um, I don't know if it got caught on video, but the torch will pop any remaining bubbles. I don't think there should be any bubbles. This coat is so thin and the resin was warm enough. There was very low viscosity. And so all the bubbles should just rise to the surface. But just as a double check, I went through, over the whole thing with the torch to, and that lowers the viscosity even more, expands the air, caught in the bubbles and causes them to pop. So again, this is very thin coat, just applied with the squeegee. I did add a tiny little bit of uh, colloidal silica to the epoxy. That just, it doesn't really, it's not really enough to thicken it, but it does seem to help have it stay in place a little bit and it helps it soak in to low spots better. It, it seems to change the uh, surface tension of the material so it seems to spread more evenly and fill in the weave a little bit better. The parts are looking really great now. That coat of epoxy and the fiberglass just brings out the grain. It's really looking nice. Um, I've got, like I say, one more fill coat that I'm going to do to the deck today. I'll let this set up a little bit more and get to the tacky stage and then I'll brush on a fairly thick fill coat. As I said, the Hull is, that's enough fill coat for now. Again, it's very thin, but I plan to wrap the bottom of the boat with one more layer of glass and wrap that up onto the deck. So that will serve, that next layer of glass will serve two purposes, reinforcing the bottom and essentially making the seam tape at the part line. That's what we have left to do today. I'm gonna to go have some lunch and we'll be good. So the goal is to get a chemical bond between the existing coats of epoxy and the new coat of epoxy. I'm about to do the next fill coat. If I leave it too long, the epoxy is fully cured and we would be depending on a mechanical bond between the new coat of epoxy and the existing coat of epoxy. So I'd like to get it while the, there's still some chemical action left in the epoxy that's already on the boat waiting to happen and that way when I apply the new coat that will bond with the epoxy molecules that are already there and will get a chemical bond so it's as if it's one complete and continuous coating of epoxy without any break in the molecules if you go too soon you'll just be wetting out the wet epoxy that's already there so the wet stuff there will just flow in with the new stuff and you know if it drips off it drips off we want to build so we want what's already there to stay there um, and the new stuff to add to that and it's particularly important with the first coats the first fill coat after the wet out coat so the one i just did um, if this is glass is not bonded down to the surface of the boat and you add more epoxy you might end up floating the fabric off the surface of the boat and that's not what we want we went through a lot of effort to scrape off the excess resin in doing so we get the fiberglass as close to the surface of the wood as possible and that's the strongest layup having more excess epoxy doesn't make the layup any stronger it actually weakens it what we want to have is that fabric tight down against the surface of the wood and with as little excess epoxy on as necessary. At this point, now that it's, the fabric's bonded to the wood, we want to fill the weave with just enough epoxy so we have a smooth, shiny surface when we're all done. We don't need to add more than that. That, again, starts to weaken it. So we want as little epoxy on the whole boat as possible in order to achieve that, we want to have the glass tight against the surface, put on a new layer. While that epoxy still has some molecules waiting out there, hanging out to bond to the next fill coat, then each time as we add a fill coat, we have the epoxy cured so it's not going anywhere, but still uncured enough that it'll bond with a new coat. There's a fine line where the epoxy is hard enough, it's bonded, and, but there's still chemical reaction waiting to happen. If you think about it, we, we want the glass stuck down. That means 
that the epoxy's gelled a little bit and is a little bit sticky. And we don't want it so hard that nothing sticks to it. We want some place in between. When it's first completely wet, it's not really all that sticky. It's just wet. Then as the epoxy cures, it becomes stickier and stickier. So if we take a cotton swab or a cotton ball and we stick it to the surface, you can see it's pulling threads of cotton off the ball. So it's not, it's no longer wet, it's now sticky, but it is still sticky, it's not yet hard. So we're in that zone where it's ready for another coat of epoxy. This is sort of the ideal time. You can do it earlier, but you might float the glass off. You can do it later, but it might not be as strong. So this is the best time to do it. If you wait too long, you have to worry about you know, contaminants getting on the surface of the epoxy, amine blush if that happens, um, all these things that if you take care of it now, we don't have to worry about. So that's why I'm trying to get all these coats of epoxy on in the first day as soon as I can. So now that I know that I'm at that optimum point where I'll get the best bond and I won't float the glass off the surface, I'm ready to do the final fill coat. This is going to be a thicker fill coat. I'm actually going to brush it on. Um, I want to really fill that weave up so I no longer see the texture of the cloth. It'll actually take more than this. When the, the boat's all assembled, I get the deck and the hull together, I'll come back and do another fill coat. But this will really go a long way to getting a really smooth surface, and it should, should look really fabulous when it's done. Remember, I'm going to attach the deck and hull together along the part line here, and I'm going to overlap the glass from the hull onto the deck. But I don't want to have a big buildup of epoxy there. If I did, then I'd have more sanding to do. It would transition from one layer of glass to two layers of glass, plus whatever fill coats I've got on there. So we're still going to have two layers of glass and a transition between one and two, but I might as well not put any excess resin on that section just to keep that transition minimized and as small as possible. So I'm going to put some tape right along the bottom edge so when I spread my epoxy on it, it will actually be masked off and so there'll be a layer there where there's not a full fill coat. This is what's called flash tape. It uh, is intended to work with resins. The resins don't stick to it. So I've got a sticky surface right now. If I put masking tape on, I'd be gluing the masking tape down. Presumably this stuff will be easy to peel off. So I'm going to use a standard chip brush to spread the epoxy, leave the bristles full length. Um, these cheap brushes, you know, they do the job, but they definitely shed bristles, which is kind of a hassle. To help prevent that, I do a couple things. I'm just going to take my green tape here. This is a 26, 3M2060 tape, it's super sticky, just a masking tape but I've got the sticky side out. Now I'm going to take and just dab the bristles against the sticky tape to pull out any loose bristles. And that usually does a pretty good job of getting most of the loose ones out. The other thing you can do, so you can apply a little bit of super glue right along that edge, the edge of the ferrule, all the way around. And then spritz it. And that'll do a pretty good job of securing all those bristles in place. So once again, this will be a standard mix of epoxy just the same epoxy we've been using to wet out the cloth and do the first fill coat. I'm not going to add any additives to it. 
just going to brush it off. I'm trying to brush it on fairly heavily. Again, like when I do the sanding and other things where I'm trying to be uniform about how I'm approaching the whole surface of the boat, I try to be systematic about it. So I'm going to work from one end down to the other, spreading the epoxy on in a prescribed manner. I'll take, wet out the brush, slap it on the inside of the container to get the excess epoxy off, then spread that epoxy on the boat in horizontal strokes. Then I'll go in vertical strokes and even out that epoxy. And then I'll finish off with light strokes going in horizontally again. I do the same process when I'm varnishing. Anytime I want to get a uniform coating, a fairly, a fairly thick uniform coating of material on the surface, I try to be very systematic about it and it's spread, level, and tip off. And that will get a very nice uniform thickness with the epoxy and by having it uniformly thick, you're much less likely to get sags and drips. That's what we're aiming for right now. So again, the mask going on, so I won't be able to talk much, but here we go. So I think that about covers it for today. I got the glass on, wet out, two fill coats on the deck, one fill coat on the hull, and it's really looking sharp. The gloss epoxy finish really brings out the grain and it's really looking nice. I'll let the, the last fill coat on the deck here cure for a little while and then peel the tape off before it gets really hard. I wanna wait long enough that it's no longer dripping so I'll get a nice smooth edge along the tape line. Um, but that'll come off before the epoxy's hard.
I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do in the next episode. I'll be at least trimming the excess glass off. I'll probably flip the boats over, um, start working on the insides. There's other stuff I need to do that'll be coming up. I need to work on the combing, the combing lip. Um, some other stuff is coming along that in order to work efficiently, I'll want to have done at certain times. And it always takes a bit of thinking to make sure I get things done in the order I need to in order to not have to wait around for glue to dry. Waiting for epoxy to dry is sort of the bane of the existence here. That can, you know, you can do something, it takes you five minutes, and then you got to wait 12 hours for the epoxy to cure. So I want to make sure I'm doing that in an efficient manner and everything looks good. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead, hit like, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, all that stuff. Give me your buck on Patreon. You can see some of the videos a few days before they're posted to the general public. Your support's really appreciated. If you're interested in doing some great paddling in a spectacular location, I'm doing the Scudic Retreat in September. Registration has already started, so I'll try and put a link up here to um, show information about that. But uh, that's going to be a lot of fun, some great kayaking, and I'm really looking forward to that. But until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.